In this video we're going to be going over the main setup page in the Gen 4 EFI system. To access the main setup page we'll go up to here to setup and then main setup. In here you'll see different tables. I'll explain one by one what each table does and how it you can tune the engine with these different tables. First we're going to go over the RPM and MAP tables. This is where we scale everything for our fuel, ignition, air fuel ratio and learn tables, also our water meth and learn protect tables. In here we have KPA and RPM. So KPA is set up as a 100 scale, so anything below 100 is vacuum, anything above 100 is boost. If you have a naturally aspirated setup, this 100 value will be over here on the right hand side and you'll have the full width of the table. You could change any one of these to any value you like. You know, you want a smooth setup. I like to start the map at about 5 kPa bef uh, before the engine while it's idling. So if you're, for example, if your engine is idling at 70 kPa, I like to set, start it off at 65. Uh, if it's idling at 55 kPa, I like to start it off at 50 and then do a smooth transition all the way up. Just depending on if you have boost or not, you'll go from either 50 to 100 or 50 to however much boost you're running. So you could scale this up to 22 pounds or 255 kPa or anything in between that. This table is almost unlimited in the amount of scaling you could do. RPM is also pretty self-explanatory. We like to start at 600 because anything below that we consider cranking. Uh, anything, And then you could scale all the way up to 10,000 RPM if you want. You can scale to 5,000. just depends on your engine combination. And if you have any questions, we can help you set that up. Next we'll be going over the setup windows. We have fuel prime, cranking, after start, coolant enrichment, air compensation, and decel. We'll first start with fuel prime. Fuel prime is the initial shot of fuel the fuel injectors give the engine when you first turn the key on. So when the engine's cold, in this example we're giving it a shot of 18,000 milliseconds. When it's up above 200, we give it 9,000. Now these two tables interpolate, so if you've got a temperature between those two values, it will be the same temperature between, or same, same shot between these two numbers here. You could change these to help with, get the engine started. Next we move over to cranking. Cranking is the amount of fuel that we're giving the engine during the cranking position, so anytime the engine is below 400 RPM. We also do this by temperature base, it also interpolates as well. If you have an engine that likes to crank but needs a lot of throttle to get started, you probably have too much cranking fuel in these values and you lower them. It's just depending on what temperature you have, you're, you're cranking the engine over and you have that issue. After the engine has started, we go to the after start. So after start is the amount of fuel in a percentage point that we add to the engine to get some heat into it. And we only do this for a certain amount of time, so in this case, it's three seconds. So after that three seconds we move over to the coolant enrichment table. So this is the table that the engine will actually warm up on. So after it's gotten some heat into it with the after start table we could start taking that fuel away and then start warming it up with a more reasonable amount of extra fuel depending on the temperature. Um, in this example we have a 100 degrees is 120 and then by the time it reaches 180 degrees we've taken all that extra fuel out and it's running on whatever the idle cell is set to or the fuel table is set to just depending on you know what you're when you're running the engine. Next we move over to the air compensation table. So what this table does is it looks at the intake air temperature sensor and it can add or take away fuel depending on the temperature of the air entering into the motor. In this example we have for 50 degrees we have, we're adding 6%, at 90 degrees we're adding 3%, and once we get up to 120 degrees we're actually taking away fuel. So we're, we're going be, be below 100% and taking 5% away. Uh, this is just an example. Not all the, We don't do this all the time. It just depends on the, the engine. Uh, a turbo engine will see much higher 
you know, air, air temperatures than a naturally aspirated one will. But it's kind of all based on trial and error and see, see what the engine likes. Uh, you get up at a colder temperatures, the air gets a little bit more dense. You can actually add a fuel to it to help run, help it run. Moving over to the decel table, so this is the amount of fuel. It's a fixed pulse width when the engine is in the decel mode. So decel mode is activated in this example. Any RPM above 2,500 and the TPS below 1%. Um, so and, then, and at that we're giving 4,000 milliseconds. This is to help with lean pop or something like that, just to help keep the engine more stable as it's coming on coming down on decel. Next we move into the idle cell. Here we'll set parameters for when the idle cell is activated. The idle cell is located inside the fuel table and the spark table. In this example we have a value of 6. In this case it means 0.6% of the throttle. A value of 10 would mean 1%. There's a missing decimal point here. We can also turn it on and off with enable disable. Next up is the map sensor setup. By default, most Gen 4 systems are going to use the internal map sensor, which is a 2.5 bar sensor, good to about 20 pounds of boost. Here we can, if we're running more boost than that, we can actually put a 3 bar or 5 bar map sensor, or if you're running just naturally aspirated, we can actually put an external 1 bar map sensor on it as well. We can all, and this is where we would set all that stuff up. This concludes this tuning video. Stay tuned for more to come.